this has been sort of the, if you're going to play a virus-proof stock, play Netflix, um, what do you actually expect to come out of earnings today? Oh, I think they're going to uh, crush the numbers, the subscriber numbers, and the revenues will be fine. And I think the silver lining for them is that they're spending a lot less on content because they can't produce content. So cash flow should improve as well. Um, I guess the, the bottom line, though, is what happens six months from now when they're not producing content and they start to run out of new stuff for their, you know, their giant installed base to consume. So I think that the stock price run-up doesn't actually reflect the health of the company. Right now, they're super healthy. Nobody's quitting. Everybody's using the service. It's just that the people that are already subscribers to Netflix aren't necessarily spending more money. It's like staying at the buffet for an extra dish. You don't pay more. You just consume more. And I think that in six months, we're going to have a bunch of fat consumers who have gorged themselves at the Netflix trough, and there's just not going to be any new shows in September, October. So I guess the question is, people might be watching more Netflix. It doesn't mean that they're paying more for Netflix necessarily. So how do we square sort of uh, content and user usage uh, versus Netflix actually making more money off of that? Well, for, for sure, if you're consuming more, you're less likely to quit. And, you know, stay at home probably means that engagement is up by something like 20%. And I think that number is probably right. So if you were watching Netflix for, you know, 10 hours a week before, you're watching 12 hours a week now. Higher consumption, you know, means you're just not going to quit. If you're using the service, you, you have no intention of quitting. Um, net subscriber additions is the sum of their gross new subscribers minus the people who turn out. And very likely, very you know, almost nobody's churning out. So they're going to hit their numbers. I mean, that's going to happen. I just think big churn is looming in the fall, especially as services like Peacock, Hulu, and Disney Plus deliver content people haven't seen before. Uh, what about competition? Because now you have, you know, Disney streaming, et cetera. And you could also make the argument that if I'm binge watching every show ever and then I get sick of Tire King and Love is Blind, I'm going to go to Disney Plus instead. Uh, is there the, th the stomach for all of those services? Or are we going to see that kind of churn shorter term? Well, the, bi the biggest potential loser is, is conventional, you know, linear television. So the cable TV guys um, have the most to lose because if consumers who are, you know, find themselves unemployed with nothing better to do want to, you know, consume a lot of content, the easiest bill to cut out is the cable bill. Um, I think wealthy people who remain employed have no problem adding a bunch of services. Um, recently unemployed or poor people are going to have trouble, you know, managing multiple subscriptions. And if they finish Netflix, and I'm saying that as a joke, but, you know, if they are done consuming everything they, they've thought of on Netflix, of course they're going to shift over to lower-priced Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and Peacock. What about... Uh what's actually baked into the stock? Because it feels like Netflix is still very owned uh, by investors. The Fangs have been the group that's held up. We have not seen a leadership shift. Uh, what's priced in right now? Well, it's a $200 billion enterprise value, which at a, a very conservative valuation tells you that investors expect them to generate $10 billion of positive free cash flow in perpetuity. That's a 5% yield, and that's pretty low. Um, and to get to positive ten billion, they need to grow probably by about a billion and a half or two billion of, of improvement for the next ten years. I think that's in, in exceedingly optimistic. So I think that the you know the investors have baked in that no one's going to watch any um, television at all. Everybody's going to cut the cord, and Netflix will be the last man standing. Um, they're treating this company like it's Amazon, like it's going to put all other retailers out of business. I don't see Netflix putting Disney out of business anytime soon. So I guess my last question then here is that if you wanted to play this trend, but as you said, the expectations longer term for Netflix are exceedingly uh, uh, optimistic, how do you play it now? Mobile video games. Um, they're, they're free to play, so increased engagement costs you nothing. And the people who spend money are going to spend more in perfect correlation to their engagement. So if you have a person who's spending $10 a week and playing five hours 
and they start playing six hours, 20%, they're going to spend $12 a week. We're seeing that with all the mobile game publishers. The, the two pure plays in the West are Zynga and Glue. Both those stocks are doing really well, and I think they have not finished going up. Uh, they're not at all-time highs, and I think they're probably positioned to hit all-time highs.